Good to see you this morning. It is a wonderful Michigan July. It is beautiful out there. God is showing God's wonderful uh, pension for beauty with all that we see outside. Welcome to everybody who's joining us online. It is a delight to be back with you. I've been on vacation for a few weeks. I see my wife has joined us also. Both of our skin has dropped a shade or two uh, thanks to a four-year-old who likes playing outside in the water for hours at a time. We hope that you'll be inspired and encouraged uh, this morning, uh, whatever you're facing this morning, uh, that you realize that God is with you and God is here uh, to join us as we worship. What we like to do in uh, this season of connection is to take just a moment to turn around and to greet one another and to introduce yourself. And uh, the question uh, that I'd like you to, to, to bring to another person today is just wish them a happy Sunday. Those of you online, you're welcome to, uh, to, to greet one another using the chat box. And you're also invited to um, greet one another to uh, uh, use the chat box to put your prayer requests on them as well. We've got some uh, musical chairs going on here which is great. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord where friendships are about everything. Uh, you know, it's been a very busy uh, week at church, actually a very busy couple of weeks. When you all walked up the walkway, did you get a chance to see how beautiful the Memorial Garden is looking? Uh, the, the bushes around the back have been, uh, all the way around, have been trimmed. Uh, the Memorial Garden has new plantings. I don't know if it's ever looked as good as it does this morning in 15 years of St. David's. It looks fantastic. And a big reason is because of Cindy and Howard Rush, who were longtime members a while ago, recently came to a funeral and said, oh, we've got some time on our hands. We're going to donate in this way. And they've been here for weeks uh, at the uh, 10 o'clock service. We showed you some pictures of them at work, kind of like you, Jason. You saw something that needed uh, doing around uh, the church, and you went ahead and jumped in. So uh, we're really appreciative for Howard and for Cindy and the work of gardening they've done. If you like to garden, uh, Jeannie Peterson is in charge of our gardening Rhoda, and so uh, see her if you'd like to do something like that. Uh, remember for our online friends, you can find this morning's bulletin by following the link in your chat box. And if you'd like to submit a prayer request again, please do so via the chat. Once again, welcome to all who are here this morning. We are delighted to have you and excited for what God has planned for us this morning. Thanks for being here. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I would like to invite somebody who has a bulletin. If they would like to read our first lesson, you can simply stand where you are. And we can go from there. Would you like to read? Yeah. Okay. You may stand up. Okay. 
in view. You feel the and the Good and everything. Did you not know it? and bear much fruit to your glory. Thank you. Steve Reinstra, would you care to do the second lesson? It follows the psalm. I'll invite you all to uh, first, as Steve gets acquainted for that reading he'd never seen before, uh, to please play the, pray the psalm with me, but not the refrain. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places. Indeed, indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are also there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, Darkness is not too dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me and lead me in the way that is everlasting. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. You did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The children and heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ, if in fact we suffer for him, so that we may also be glorified. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory of God to be revealed in us. But the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. The creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, 
hopes that creation itself will be set free from this bondage to decay and will attain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. Not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit groaning inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our body. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, but who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope, we hope for that which we do not see. We wait for it with faith. May your word live in us. And bear much fruit to your glory. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Lord, Jesus put forth before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you will uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will bundle, uh, I, I will uh, bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat and put it into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and evil doers, and they then will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. But anyone with ears, listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Lord Christ. Before you sit down, I'd like you to look at your bulletin, and you'll see something called a centering prayer. And before we begin our sermon, I'd like to invite you to pray with me at centering prayer. I'm hoping that over the next few weeks as we pray this before the sermon, we'll get it memorized. So when we're waiting in traffic, we're waiting in that grocery store line, a prayer of devotion and dedication to God might come to you. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, let your will be done through me. One more time. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, let your will be done through me. You may be seated. Are you going through a season of waiting? It is the place where you are different from the place you want to be. Are you waiting for a child or a grandchild to get their act together? Are you waiting for a job to appear? Are you waiting for a relationship to be what it can be? It seems that all of us have times in our lives when we go through these seasons of waiting so the title of today's sermon is When God Says Wait. When God Says Wait. When God Says Wait, I don't know about you, but I don't like to be in that waiting room. I don't like to be sitting in there all discouraged and anxious about where I want to be because where I want to be is not where I am. And so when I'm sitting in that waiting room, I can get angry, I can get discouraged, I can get hopeless, and I 
can be in a place where I'm just not generally happy. I forget that no matter where I go, as my daughter likes to remind me, God is there. It doesn't matter if I'm in the waiting room, it doesn't matter if I'm at the plateau, or if I'm in the valley. God is there with me. Just because the road gets bumpy doesn't mean God gets in another car. Just because the road gets turning and twisty doesn't mean God takes a different route. Just because I'm hurting and I'm being persecuted and I'm not where I want to be and I'm on the cross being crucified, God has not abandoned me. In fact, God is up to something. God is up to resurrection. God is up to restoration. God is always with us, even in the waiting room. So while it is a place of sadness and what am I doing here? This is so uncomfortable and inconvenient. It's also a place where God is doing something. God is forming you. God is reforming you into the kind of person God needs to do what God needs of. Friends, Elvis may have left the building, but God has not Especially God is present when God asks us to wait. Now we're in Matthew 13, as you know, we've been in Matthew 13 for a few weeks, and in this particular portion of this gospel, Jesus is teaching faith through the eyes of farming. This morning, as we heard, a farmer goes out and plants wheat, he goes to bed, and an enemy comes and sows seeds of weeds. A few days or weeks later, as the plants come up, the weeds appear as well, and the workers run to the landowner, and they say, there are weeds growing with the wheat. Why don't we just yank them up? But the owner says, wait. Wait, the, the, the workers must have thought. Well, the weeds are going to choke the wheat. The wheat may be killed by the weeds. At the very best, the wheat won't grow like we think it ought to grow. But the owner says, the owner knows what's going on. He knows that those weeds may or may not kill the wheat. He knows that that wheat may not grow like we thought it should grow. But he also knows that that wheat would not make it unless those weeds were cared for in the way that the farmer cared for them. And so the farmer said, wait. Every one of us as something either that's gone in our life, gone on in our lives, or is going on in our lives, in which God is saying, wait. So what do we do? Before I left on vacation, I went to visit one of our dear parishioners. Her name is Elvia. Elvia is in her 90s. She's in hospice care now. And so she's bedridden. She's at a facility. Uh, her diet is limited. She doesn't have a ton of energy. But as soon as I walk into that door, knowing that she's simply waiting on God to call her to glory. Her eyes light up. Sunshine fills the room, and she says, Father Chris, and she begins to tell me about all her years spent in the office as an office worker. All of the traveling that she's done. She's been to more states and more countries than I will ever be in. And she points over to a side table where there's a picture of her and Barack Obama. She is spending her time not dwelling on the questions of where am I going? I'm so scared about what's next. But she has filled her waiting with blessing. She has filled this time, this precious time that she has, not with getting all anxious and worried, but with blessing and thanksgiving. Jesus, at one point in his ministry elsewhere in Matthew, took some disciples up into uh, up, up onto a hill and he gave his famous Sermon on the Mount in which he said this do not be anxious for what you will wear, what you will eat where you will live God knows you need these things seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be given to you I wonder if we exchange those worries, I wonder if we exchange that uh, discomfort that we feel in the waiting room with time taken up, counting our blessings. 
what would it look like for us not to take the bait of worry and discouragement and to say, huh, God has given me a good relationship, relationship, relationship. I've been to this many places. I've owned this many things. I've eaten at this many restaurants. And if we were to follow Albia's cue and count our blessings and all that God has done, God has been so good to us. But often when we get in that waiting room, we can forget the blessings. Let's do what Albia does. And when we wait, when God says wait, count the blessings. Three workers checked in at the auto plant. The, uh, the three of them worked side by side where they tended to an endless run of chassis that would come before them. The first worker was asked, what do you do? He looked kind of bored and kind of uh, unenthusiastic. And he said, well, when the chassis comes along, I make sure that the 17 spot welds underneath are done correctly. The second worker was asked, what do you do? And he said, well, when the chassis comes along, I make sure that the transmission hanging from chains in the ceiling comes down just right and that transmission is bolted into that chassis correctly. He also looked rather bored and unenthusiastic. Then the third worker was asked, what do you do? And his eyes lit up and a smile came across his face. And he said, I make sure that hardworking carpenters Moms with kids and weekend gardeners have a safe, reliable, and comfortable way to get their work done. I wonder when we're sitting in that waiting room, if we could get a bigger view of what God is doing. Instead of looking at our little lives and, and what's not coming quite right with us, if we could see ourselves as God sees us, which is an irreplaceable puzzle piece in that huge, huge uh, tapestry that God's putting together. You know, in a puzzle, sometimes I work on them. I often think, well, why did God give me this piece? It doesn't fit anywhere. And I don't know where to put that piece. Sooner or later, as you work through the puzzle piece, you find there's a perfect place for that puzzle piece. Same with our lives. God has given each one of us a unique and valuable puzzle piece that only fits where God needs it to fit. And getting God's perspective on things makes a whole lot of difference. Every once in a while when I meet somebody older, I like to ask them for advice. Of course, with each passing day, it's harder to find somebody older. But I'd like to ask them, as you look back on your life, what piece of advice might you give? And I asked that of one gentleman in particular not too long ago, and he took a deep breath and he said, I'd be more patient. I wouldn't sweat, sweat the small stuff. I realize that life is a marathon and not a sprint. And that there's really a lot of time, a big picture that's being painted. And every single day, it can go as it goes. But there's a wider perspective, which we need to understand. I took the kids to the zoo not long ago, not our trip, Jessica, but previous. And I took them to this one particular exhibit that was just stunning. And we, we, we came out of this exhibit and I asked the first kid, hey, what did you think of that? And my kid looked at the, looked at the ground and said, you know, I, that floor was so sticky. That was such a dirty exhibit. I counted four bags of empty bags of potato chips and three candy bar wrappers that were strewn around on the ground. Somebody needs to clean that place out. I asked my second child, what did you think of the exhibit? Eyes lit up, big smile across the face. It's the most wonderful thing I've ever seen. All above me, a rainbow of butterflies. Sometimes when we're in that waiting room, all we can do is look down at our narrow perspective. And we forget that wider perspective that God has, that God's up to. When God says wait, I doubt God's perspective. I have a friend named Sue, and she likes, she's a very active woman, and she, she loves to work out at the gym. I saw her not too long ago. She had some gym clothes on. And she also loves to cook and have people over to her house. She likes to go out to lunch, go out to dinner with friends. Recently, her husband took a, uh, ran into a health concern, so much so that he's nearly bedridden. 
and she now has to tend to him nearly 24 hours. He gets up, she has to make sure he can get where he's going. She has to drive him to his various doctor's appointments. She has to make sure he's got the medication that he needs. And so she's spending all of her time doing this and is no longer able to go to the luncheons, to go to the dinners, to host people at her house, and to go to the gym. So when I saw her recently with her gym clothes on, I said, Sue, are you going to the gym? And she said, no, I can't go to the gym. My husband needs me, and, and I, I love being with him. But I built a home gym in our basement. I said, what? She said, yeah. I took all the money from the lunches and the dinners and the dinner parties and the gym membership, and you should see that home gym. It's very interesting. When we get in the waiting room, so often we want to look at the things that we can't do instead of the things that we can do. And when you're like Sue, she didn't get bitter, she got clever. And she started to think of the constraints that she had through a new lens, a lens of opportunity. I wonder if that's what God's inviting us to do. Instead of saying, well, I can no longer go out with my friends, I can't get that, I can't go there, I can't do that. What can you do? What has your new circumstance opened up for you. I love visiting one of our parishioners. Her name is Jerry. And Jerry used to live with her husband in a wonderful home not too far from here. But as the years have gone by, she's now in an independent living facility. And whenever I go to visit Jerry, it's a small little apartment. She opens that door. She greets me with her walker, big smile on her face. And I say, Jerry, what have you been up to? And she takes me over to a place where she knits. And she knits small caps for little babies in the preemie unit at the hospital. And she's knit probably thousands of these. And when I go see Jerry, she doesn't give me this list of what I can't do, what I wish I could do, what I no longer can do. She tells me what she can do. And so I love going over to Jerry, seeing what she can do, and then asking of myself, as I might ask you, when you look at your circumstance in the waiting room, don't look at what you can't do, but at what you can do. When God has us waiting, when God says wait, let's not think of what we can't do, but of, of what we can do. St. Paul, I think, understood this. We heard that wonderful reading, Steve. Thank you for jumping in there with all of that advance notice. St. Paul, as we know, was called by God, called to be an evangelist to the Gentiles. And he went off and he uh, preached in many different cities and he wrote letters to many of the churches to which he, um, to, to which he, he, which he had founded. And one of those churches, of course, was in Rome. And we heard a portion of his letter. And as we look at St. Paul's life, we see that he was well acquainted with waiting. The book of Acts tells us he waited for his companions to join him. He waited for persecutions to come. He waited in jail, where he wrote a number of his letters. And it's interesting, as Steve read for us this morning, that Paul said this, I know that this present time is difficult, but I have a vision for what's to come. I know what's to come is better than what I have. So I wait with patience. So often we forget that God knows this. So often we forget that, gosh, God's forgotten about me. I'm so little. We said it in Psalm 139 today, beautiful Psalm. Oh Lord, I have searched you and known you. You know my journeys and my resting places. You know my thoughts from afar. You know my going down and my coming up. You are acquainted with all my ways. Friends, it's hard to wait. I hate to wait. But God knows you're waiting. And God makes us wait because he's up to something great. And so I believe that as you and I begin more thoroughly to live into these concepts of blessing God while we're waiting, right? of getting God's wider perspective for where the world is going and what our part in it is, and as we begin to see that 
looking at what we can do versus what we can't do opens up all kinds of things for us. I believe God will use us as we practice those things to form us into more mature people, to form us into more resilient people, to form us into the kind of people who will leave this place and do exactly what God asks us to do. Can I get an amen? We believe in God, whose love is the source of all life and the desire of our lives, whose love was given a human face in Jesus of Nazareth, whose love was crucified by the evil that wants to enslave us all. justice and to live in peace, to care for the earth and to share the common wealth of God's goodness, to live in the freedom of forgiveness and the power of the spirit of love and in the company of the faithful to be the church for the glory of God. Amen. Almighty God, you call us to this blessed work of discipleship. Encourage and energize your church to do this hard work, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Bonnie, our bishop, Chris, Steve, and all lay and ordained ministers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal one, you desire to bless your people so that we may bless others. Help our elected leaders be a blessing to all whom they serve, especially President Joe Biden, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, our representatives and senators, and Ken Cyber, Mayor of Southfield. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of compassion and healing, look with favor upon the suffering, and may we help you heal the world, especially troubled places like Haiti, Ukraine, Sudan, and Israel. We also pray for Episcopal parishes in our diocese. Send your healing and peace and give us direction in the ways we can help. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name through the outreach activities that we undertake here at St. David's, especially those involving our anti-poverty and gun safety initiatives. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, who desires health and prosperity, bring healing to all who are disheartened, discouraged, suffering, and sick. We now pray for all who are ill this morning and need your touch. Whom have you put upon our hearts? Please pray for them silently or aloud. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Holy One, thank you for your redemptive work in Jesus and the hope he gives to us and all who have gone before us. We pray for those who have died. Feel free to name them silently or aloud. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In our Zoom chat box, uh, I, I, I want to acknowledge that we've had some prayer requests, um, but the biggest one seems to be to wish us a happy Sunday. So our closing colleague is calling God. Thank you for dwelling among us and calling us to follow you. Strengthen, guide, and protect us. Be with all of us who long for direction all who need a fresh start, and all who long for the freedom of your forgiveness. Give your mercy to us who are weary and look for a place to rest in your presence. Renew us as heaven and earth meet, that we may find our true life in you and with you, even now, even here. Amen. Friends, let's take a moment to call to mind our shortcomings and confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in 
thought that we're in need by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. You may be seated for just a couple of announcements here, and uh, let's see. One of the announcements is that uh, next week we will have our seminarian begin, uh, Felicity Thompson, and here at the 8th, you'll be especially glad because she'll be doing the readings for us. <laughs> I'm going to keep calling on you, unless you'd like to be called upon. Always happy to have you all uh, do some reading. Uh, right after church, we'd love to invite you to head to the conference room where we do our summer Sunday uh, 9.30 learning hour uh, by discussing with other saints. Uh, uh, we call it um, Faith and the Headlines. And so you're welcome to come and join us. Um, I also want to kind of apologize for the sandals. I normally would not wear sandals at church, but I think I broke my toe. Um, it was my first day of vacation, slipped and fell, and they tell you when you break it, you just got to, I can't really put a splint on it, so... That, that's not, I, I don't mean to disrespect anybody by wearing samples up here. I just want to pledge you know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, do you volunteer at any church ministries here at St. David's? If that's you, we want to recognize you. Um, our volunteer recognition luncheon is being held on Wednesday the 26th. So if you'd like to volunteer, you, or if you'd like to be, um, have a free lunch, you are welcome to come. It's the least that the staff can do here. Al, me, Amy, the, your paid staff are going to just do the hard work of going to the restaurant and ordering a Subway sandwich. But we will be cleaning up and we will be, I think we might be bringing some things home, Amy, but we are going to be serving you is the bottom line. Uh, you all know about our summer reading project, uh, $2 a day is the book. Uh, you've heard it mentioned here a number of times. I think there are three left if you haven't uh, received one already. September coming up, um, Teens Bowl. Uh, they're looking for recruits for our bowling league. A uh, talent is not important, uh, but if you'd like to go out and uh, have some fun with some of your parish members, please sign up. You can email the church office. Finally, hope you'll stay connected with us all week. You can subscribe to our podcast. You can go to our Facebook page, our YouTube channel. And uh, if you're new with us, stop by the ministry club in the atrium for a special gift and a welcome from God's family in this little portion of the vineyard in Southfield. Uh, any other announcements this morning? Well, I may have time was great, but I, I, I know y'all on the second, this was a couple of ago on the second. And I knew I knew I had problems. Okay. Well, thank you, Tom. You know, I probably would be too much. Okay. <laughs> Friends, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice unto God. Steve, I invite you forward, if I could, to um, ask the please. Come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee.
Our Eucharistic prayer is found. Our Eucharistic prayer is found in your bulletins. I invite you to please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give right to you our thanks and praise. Glory and praise are yours, majestic God, for you made a ladder between heaven and earth. In Jesus, you descend that ladder to bring us into your presence, and in his death and resurrection, you bring us with him, ascending that ladder to your throne of grace. You set creation free from its bondage to decay and bestow upon your children the freedom of the glory of your redemption. While our lives are circumscribed by the limitations of our minds and bodies, your life is beyond our reach and outside our imagination. You call your people to be a blessing to all the families of the earth. And so we join the latter of angels and archangels ascending and descending with all the company of heaven, singing the song of your unending praise. And so we gladly thank you with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Liberating God through the sonship of Jesus, you send your spirit to create among your children the joy of adoption and bestow upon us the gift of being your heirs. By the power of that same spirit, take the fragile flesh of your people and transform it into that of the resurrected glory of your church. Send that spirit upon us now that we might be what we eat, Christ's body in the world and sanctify this bread and this cup that they may be for us the blessed body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, who had supper with his disciples, took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup again, he gave you thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of patience and hope, sower of all good seeds, show those who suffer the incomparable glory of what you have in store for them. When your children's field is interlaced with weeds among the wheat, when the labor pains of creation groan to high heaven, Give us your heart to live in your time and abide in the truth of what we do not yet see. Bless your people that they may know that you are with them and will keep them wherever they go, that they may exclaim that surely you are among them, though they did not know it. As in Christ you proclaim your word to the spirits in prison, make yourself known to all who find themselves incarcerated in body, mind, or spirit. Bring all creation into the eternal joy of abiding in an awesome place, your very house, the gate of heaven, where you dwell forever, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, through all ages and power and glory. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Together, let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim that we will be love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. My brothers and sisters, go now as those who have been brought from death into life. Welcome the Christ in all whom you meet. Present yourselves to God as a person who is patient with the weight. And may God provide for you in mercy. May Christ Jesus greet you as, well, as you welcome the stranger. And may the Holy Spirit lead you in the ways of sanctification and eternal life. Let us go forth into the world to love and serve God and our neighbor through worship, outreach, and love for all. <laughs> 